हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन टू ऑन एस एफ एंड बी एम डी इट्स प्रॉब्लम्स एंड सोल्यूशन टेक्निक्स होप यू हैव वॉच्ड माय सेशन नंबर वन व्हिच विल कवर बेसिक कंसेप्ट्स एंड फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ शेयर फोर्स एंड बेंडिंग मूवमेंट डायग्राम हाउ एवर वी विल रिव्यू सम ऑफ देम हियर आई वॉन्ट टू रिकॉल दोज टू फंडामेंटल रिलेशन्स वॉट वी हैव सीन इन सेशन नंबर वन first is derivative of shear force is nothing but rate of loading on beam and derivative of bending moment is nothing but shear force now based on these two relations we have written the relation between loading diagram shape of sfd and bmd and just recall that i said when you come from loading diagram towards sfd and then towards bmd you are going to integrate the things and when you go from bending moment diagram towards sfd and towards loading diagram you are getting derivatives so let us have some recap recap on all these things first is concentrated loads <coughs> two effects are there one is point load and couple and you rightly seeing on the screen shape of sfd sudden rise or fall when point load is there but no effect in bmd but when couple is acting there is no effect on sfd but there is sudden rise and fall in bmd all these things we have already learned in our session number 1 just i am taking a recap in case of distributed load when there is no load at all on a segment of a beam then sfd is constant line because no load means as i said earlier that zero for zero integration is constant so sfd is constant line and for constant integration is inclined line that is sloping line so bmd is sloping line similarly in case of udl and uvl we have discussed everything regarding shape of sfd and bmd one more point we have to recall that we already said that there are two points we have to take care of one is point of zero shear and whenever point of zero shear is there the bending moment value has peak value because we have relation that dm by dx is equal to v and when v becomes zero then this particular function that is bending moment has peak value <coughs> and second point we have learned that point of contrafracture that means whenever bending moment is zero and changing its sign from sagging to hogging or vice versa that particular point is called as point of contrafracture moving ahead here are some general steps to plot sfd and bmd so our step number 1 is draw fbd of given beam find support reactions by using equilibrium conditions but important point i have to note here that whenever you draw free body diagram of given beam we are interested only in lateral forces and couples because these two are the only elements which will cause shear and bending whomsoever is the axial force that should not be considered because it will create only elongation and contraction of the member so we are interested only in lateral forces and couples fine in second step we are supposed to do some sf calculations using proper sign convention in third step we are going to calculate bm values at various feature points now which are feature points have to, we have to consider we will see in the next problem with again proper sign convention and last point is to locate point of contrafracture if at all it is available in bending moment diagram fine so let's move ahead here is the first problem we are going to solve observe that there is a beam ab supported at a and b and carries udl of 20 kN per meter one couple is there at acting at d and one point load is acting at e so let us move to first step finding out support reactions so the beam is there and reactions are shown are a and are b and let us apply equilibrium conditions so first condition we are imposing that moment at a equal to 0 so using that condition i can find out reaction at b so first force is here 20 is the udl 
and distance is 3. So intensity into distance that is 20 into 3 is our UDL, total UDL. It will act at midpoint of that rectangle and this distance we wish to find out. So that distance is 3.5 meter. So this is the moment of that UDL. Then second is couple. It is taken here minus because it is a clockwise. Third force is 60. So from point A distance of 60 is 2 plus 3 plus 2. So it is 7. So 60 into 7 is the moment of that load. Again it is a clockwise about A. So minus and last force is RB. So for RB distance is from this point to this point. So 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3 that is equal to 10. So RB into 10 is the moment and it is anti-clockwise that's why taken positive. Solving this equation we are getting RB equal to 67 kilonewton. As our answer of RB is positive we may say that assumed sense of arrow of RB is correct. So it is assumed initially upward so it is correct. Now applying second condition summation Fy equal to 0 considering this basic sign convention upward positive. So Ra is positive here because it is assumed upward then 20 intensity into distance is my total load. It is going down so minus is taken. Then couple will not come in force equations so that is ignored. And here 60 is downward so it is taken minus and our RB answer is there 67. So solving this we are getting reaction at A equal to 53. Now second step is shear force calculation but before that just remind I said about the featured points on the beam. How to recognize that? Just to identify the points where loading rate changes. So if I look at the beam A is my first point then C is my second point because where UDL starts. D is my third point where couple is acting as well as UDL ends. E is my next point where again one point load is acting and B is my last point. So these are, this is the way how the feature points are considered. Now for shear force calculation we are keeping our things simple and straight. What I mean to say whenever section is taken we are always looking to the left side of the of my section. So always we are considering left ability of the section and we are using section slider. I will introduce that concept in just few minutes. <coughs> As we have total five points A, C, D, E and B. So at each point we are taking our section just left and just right of each point. That means total 10 values we are getting. Let's see one by one how it is done. This is my as I said section slider. So you may take any piece of paper or your eye card or anything else and that could be taken as a section slider. So this is our section line. See this green line. This is our section line and we are sliding this section line from left to right. So starting with point A but the section is just left of A and how it is written VAL that means shear at A just left. That is the way how it is written. So VAL observe the left side as I said left ABD we are going to consider. So there is empty space. Empty space means no load. So VALF I got my first value is 0 then just right of that A V A R that is A right. Now A left I am having from A left to A right there is one load observed here. It is going upward. So sections left going upward is taken positive. So this is the old value and newcomer is 53 going upward so positive. So answer is 53. Moving to next. A right I am having. Now next point is C. Just left of C is here. From A right to C left. No load is happening. So original value is 53. And newcomer is nothing. So final answer is 53. After C left move to just right. C right. So C left is available, C right is here, between these two again no point load, nothing anything. So original value is followed and no newcomer. 
so final answer is 53 our next point is d so first point is d left just left of d so c right we have and d left is here between these two yes there is a udl acting it is acting downward so as it is acting downward it should be taken negative so i have taken the original value and negative sign because of downward load and load is intensity into distance because it is a udl so udl means intensity is 20 and distance is 3 so 20 into 3 is the load and answer is minus 7 after d left just right d right so d left i am having d right is here between these two there is no point load nothing is happening so original value is taken and newcomer is zero so answer remains minus seven after d right next point is e left just left of e so d right we are having the value and e left is here between these two points there is no load so original value is taken as here and newcomer is zero so answer is minus seven now you may wonder that what happens with kapan remind the property seen in the that table whenever couple is acting shear force diagram does not have any change because couples are considered in moment equations and shear force is only the submission of forces so couple doesn't have any effect on shear force diagram okay e left is over now next part is just right of e e right e left is here that value we are already having e right is here between these two yes there is newcomer is there it is going down so it is minus and 60 so original value is here e left newcomer is minus 60 answer is minus 67 now we will come to last point b b left e right we are having b left we are now going between these two there is nothing is happening so original value is taken and newcomer is zero so final answer is minus 67 after b left move to b right so b left we are having b right is here between these two there is one load which is nothing but reaction at b which is going upward so original value is taken and reaction at b as it is going upward it is taken positive so final answer is zero let me tell you how to check our calculation always remember that first left is always zero and last right value is always zero these values must start with zero and must end with zero it means that our sf calculations are absolutely correct correct after this now we are ready to plot the diagram shear force diagram and for that we have to take one baseline which represents the axis of the member that means now beam is our horizontal member so axis of member is there and vertical ordinates are nothing but our shear forces and we are covering one by one point so first value is a left so it is plotted here a left start with zero then second value at the same point a but plus 53 so this is plus 53 and these two points are joined so this is the way first point is plotted so this is over this is over now next point is c left so c left is plotted here so this is my c left it is plus 53 so it is plotted here and these two points are joined then c right it has same value so c left and c right are same so there is no change at all here then next point is d left so d left is this point so let us plot d left which is minus 7 so it is plotted here d left is minus 7 now these two points are supposed to join to join these two points you have to identify that table property whenever udl is acting on beam shear force diagram is inclined line so that way we are going to plot that d left after d left next point is d right again same point so d left and d right at same point so it is plotted here once that d is plotted now a is cover b is cover c is cover d is cover next point is e e left so e point is here so next point is e left so this is my e left minus 7 
So joining these two points by straight line because there is no load means horizontal line. After E left, next point is E right. So on the same E, it is minus 67. So it is plotted like this. This is E right minus 67 join these two points. Once these two are plotted, next point is B last point again minus 67. So it is plotted here. B left is minus 67 join these two points and last is B right. It is zero. So this point is there B right join these two points. This way I am completing my shear force diagram right now. According to our properties of shear force, that table what we have seen, we have to check holistically whether my shear force diagram plotting is correct or wrong. First of all, first checkpoint is a point load. Observe this is a point load at A. And as I said, whenever shear force, whenever point loads are acting on beam, shear force diagram is rise and fall. Upward point load, so it is rise. Downward point load, so it is fall upward point load so it is rise second checkpoint is that whenever no load is acting sfd is horizontal no load is acting sfd is horizontal no load is acting sfd is horizontal second checkpoint third checkpoint whenever udl is acting sfd is sloping line as udl is downward so sfd must be sloping downward right and last checkpoint, whenever couples are acting, SF doesn't have any change. So these are the some points which are very important to check after drawing your diagram. But one more important way plot, that is point of zero shear. This point we get it. So what we will do, we are interested to find out the location of this particular point. So let us call this as a X distance. I have taken X from left because it is simpler side. You may take X from right, no problem at all. Right now, I have taken X from left point A. Now I am extending this point to my loading diagram. And this FBD we are going to consider. Correct? So it is here. Left side FBD is plotted. So this is our section line. And left side FBD because we have taken X from left. That FBD we have plotted. Now we are interested to write bending moment equation for this particular section line. So let us write that bending moment equation. Yeah, this is here. Bending moment equation for this section. 53 into x. It is going like this. And as I said, it is bending moment equation. For bending moment equation, we know that sagging is positive like this. And I given one more term. You can call it as a happy or you can call it as a out. So out is positive. That is sagging is positive. So 53 into x out. So plus 53x. Second load is UDL. Section is here. This much is the UDL. So intensity is 20. Distance is x by 2 acting at center x by 2 upon 2. So moment of that UDL is 20 into x by 2 whole square divided by 2. Observe that this UDL is acting downward which will create hogging type moment or another word you say in as I refer the term in is negative out is positive. This is in so in is negative. So it is minus sign is taken. Once I got my this equation. We also know that dm by dx is equal to V. And here at this particular point shear force is zero. So what I am doing this derivative of bending moment equation is equated to zero. That means I am doing V equal to zero so that I can get that particular distance X. Solving this equation, I am getting that distance X from A. So this distance I am getting the location of point of zero shear. This is the way I am getting location of point of zero shear. Now move to step number three, bending moment calculation. Here also we are doing things simple, but like SFD, we are not doing every time left and right of each point, not necessary because we know perfectly that whenever couple is acting, then and then only just left and just right is necessary because in bending moment diagram, the sudden change will occur only when the couple is acting. So observing our beam, 
we observe that there is only point D where the couple is acting. So only at point D we are doing two calculations of bending moment. Otherwise, at all remaining points, single calculation at each point is sufficient. Fine. Okay. Let's start one by one. Again, same section slider is taken. Always considering left FBD of my section. So my first section slider is here. And remember that our sign convention is this: sagging is positive. And I give you simple idea. If section is there, out and out it is nothing but sagging. We are taking it positive. And for any section in and in that is we are taking negative this simple logic we will remember instead of that sagging and hogging okay first point is a bending moment at a exactly at a observe left part there is empty space so bending moment at a is zero next part is our point C so exactly at point C observe left FBD we are taking so force is 53 and distance is 2. So 53 into 2 is the moment. Question remains who is the sign. So for that I said the moment is like this about the section line. So out is positive. So we have taken positive. So this is the answer moment at C. But at point D we know that couple is acting at D and therefore one section should be just left and another section should be just right. As we know, whenever couple is acting, there is a sudden change in bending moment diagram. So we are taking two sections. So first section is D left. Observe left FBD. It is here. So we are going to take moment of two forces, one by one. First is 53. Distance is this. So 53 into 5 is my first moment. This is the first moment. It is going out. So positive. So that is the first one case. Now second case is UDL. So intensity into distance acting at midpoint here. So intensity into distance 20 into 3 acting at midpoint. So I want this distance from my section point. So this distance is 1 point for you. So distance is 1 point for you. Now Observe that UDL is acting downward and it is creating moment in type about this section point. So coming in is negative. So minus sign is taken. So 20 into 3 into 1.5 is the moment negative because of hogging nature or in type moment. Answer is there moment at D just left. Now <clears throat> just right we have to consider. Now as the same point is there. Why I should again calculate every moment here? Not necessary. Only I will consider what is the new because from D left to D right I have to go. At D we got a couple. So now D point is seen. So couple I have to consider. So couple is acting clockwise here. But on left side the clockwise means like this. Observe this arrow and just investigate whether it is going out or coming in. You observe that the green color yellow, sorry, blue color yellow is going out. So it is couple value is 40. So it is taken positive. So this value is taken as it is original value. And this is the answer. Next is point E. Here there is no couple. So directly one value is taken. Again, all left side I have to consider because that is a new point. So therefore, all values are considered. So one by one, we will take the moment. First is 53 is the more force and distance is this one. So that is 2, 3 and 2. So 53 into 7, it is out. So 53 into 7 is out. So positive. First part is over. Now take the UDL into picture. 20 into 3 is the UDL. It is acting at this point and distance required is from midpoint to the section point. So that is 2 plus this particular distance is 1 point for you. So it is 3 point for you. Observe UDL creates in type moment. So minus is taken. That point is also clear. Now last point is couple. Couple is acting something like this. Clockwise couple. So sections left part. Clockwise couple means out. And out is taken positive. So answer is 180. And last point is our B point. Now for B point, 
all this particular area I should consider as my moment part. So one by one we will start. Observe, this is the distance for 50 kilonewton force. So 50 into 10 going out positive. Then UDL is 20 into 3 is the UDL. Distance is from this midpoint up to the section point. So that distance is 6.5 meter. UDL is coming in, so negative. Then couple, it is shown here. You can, couple is a free vector, you can show it anywhere. So every time I am moving the couple so as to identify whether it is going in and out. So this is simpler way to identify. So it is out, so it is taken positive. Then force is there 60 into this distance from the section. So 60 into 3, it is coming in, so minus. So final answer is 0. Here also, I am getting one check. I am starting with 0 and I am ending with 0. It simply means my bending moment calculations are also correct. But do you identify one basic difference in these calculations for SF and BM? In SF calculations, we always carry old value and just newcomer is added. But in bending moment, we are not doing the same thing as it is because you understand that bending moment means force into distance. So here distance comes in picture. So at every change in section, the distance changes. So I can't carry old value as it is for newcomer. That's why every time I am going to take the moment. So that is the basic point you have to understand. Once that all values are covered, now I'm interested this particular point because we know at point of zero shear, bending moment is maximum. So I'm interested to find out that maximum bending moment value. Just recalling the equation what we have written earlier, we already written that equation of bending moment and we already got that distance 4.65. Only my job remain to put this value in this equation. I am getting M max. So 176.26. Thus we get a max value which is lying in segment CD 176.23. Now while plotting BMD we should take care that this M max value lies between C and D. So that care we will take when we plot our BM diagram. So let us take one baseline which represents the axis of beam and we will plot the values of Benjamin diagram as Y coordinate. The first value we have to plot is moment at A and second value is moment at C. So these two values are plotted here. So moment at A is 0 and moment at C is 106. Joining these two points by straight line because according to our concept, when shear force diagram is horizontal, bending moment diagram is inclined line. First point is over. Now, Moving from C to D, we also know that there is a peak value which is found here. So I should plot this value and this value simultaneously. So bending moment maximum is 176.23 and D left value is 175. So let us plot those values. Just observe on the screen. It is like this. So this point we are already having peak value when shear force is 0 we have peak value it is already plotted here and at d first value is left question arises how to join these three points again we will go back to our fundamental that whenever udl is acting on beam which is constant line the shear force diagram is inclined line that point is over and when shear force diagram is inclined line our bending moment diagram is a second degree curve and we also know that whenever UDL is acting downward, our BMD has concavity down. That's why this curve is joined in this fashion, concavity down. Okay. Now after D left is plotted, next point is D right. At the same point, D point, D right. So it is plotted here, D right. So this is the rise we get from D left to D right and there is a sudden change because of couple. After D right is plotted, now next point is our E point. Bending moment at E point plus 201, it is plotted here. Again observe, these two points are joined by a straight line because of our logic that 
whenever shear force diagram is horizontal its integration is inclined line so dmd is inclined line and last point is bending moment at b so this is the point again we have joined these two points by straight line same logic sfd horizontal bmd inclined line right so this way we have plotted our diagram of bmd like the like we have checked the sf diagram we also check our bm diagram as per our logic two three points we have to observe whenever no load is acting on beam bending moment diagram is inclined line no load inclined line no load inclined line or you can call sloping line that is first check second whenever downward distributed load is acting bmd is parabolic curve concavity down third point we have to check that whenever couple is acting there is a sudden rise or fall for clockwise couple sudden rise and if at all any anti clockwise couple then there will be a fall so here right now it is clockwise couple so there is sudden rise and for point loads there is no change so observe there is no change for point loads right so these are the fundamental points how to check our bmd this way we are completing our first problem to plot shear force diagram and bend so friends i hope with these two sessions i clear your basic concepts of sfd and bmd what is the nature of sfd and bmd and how to solve the problems and solution techniques on sfd and bmd but very important to do a practice because practice makes man perfect for the additional practice you can refer my handouts which is at uh, url mentioned on your screen and don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you very much